Hello, today we're going to show you how to set up your C++ builder environment to create Android apps. When you're installing, there are two different installation options to choose from. The first one is the legacy ISO installer. This one is for offline if you're installing on a computer that doesn't have reliable bandwidth. But the more reliable newer installer is the web installer, and it's based on Git it technology. It installs much faster and also only downloads the parts that you need. So you see the initial downloads smaller, much smaller, but then you'll also end up downloading less in the long run as well. The other advantage of the web-based Git it installer is you can go back later and add or move features much easier with that one. So it's highly recommended that you use the, the Git it-based installer unless there's a compelling reason for you to use the ISO installer. So I'm gonna be using the web installer here. There are subtle differences, but most of it will be about the same. So you want to choose the platforms you want for now. Like I said, with the web installer, you can go back and add them later. And then down at the bottom, it shows you how much it's going to download. So you see we're only downloading 2.2 gigabytes, which is way less than the 6 gigabytes of the entire ISO installer. Uh, if you are installing from Rad Studio, you can optionally add Delphi as well. Otherwise, you'll just see the C++ Builder options here. The next screen you get is the additional options screen, where you can select other languages, uh, add app optional packages like uh, samples, intraweb, etc. And then if you're doing Android development, it's important that you have the Android SDK and NDK. And I recommend just installing them from here because that makes everything set up much nicer. Plus it gets the right version of the NDK. Uh, the JDK is also required, but I find I frequently already have that, the, the Java development kit already installed on my system. So and select these unless you've installed them manually elsewhere. And also, I'm just going to make a shout out here. If you're not familiar with Interbase, definitely check it out. 2017 was a big update for it, and it's a great way to install an embeddable database in your mobile applications on Android or iOS. After that, you'll be presented with the Operations Completed Successfully screen. So let's talk about setting up for Android. Like I said, you need the Java JDK, the Android SDK, and the Android NDK, uh, which hopefully you installed with the IDE. From there, you're going to run the Android SDK Manager to download the latest tools, platforms, and drivers, which I'll show you how to do. Then you set up the Android SDK in your IDE, install the Android USB drivers for your device, and then connect your Android device via USB. There's more information about all this down there at the bottom, and I'll show you how to do it here shortly as well. We're not going to cover setting up for iOS today, but I just want to point out a few things for you here. By the way, these requirements are pretty much the same no matter what tool you're using just because they're the requirements of the platform. Other platforms that are supported are Windows 32-bit and 64-bit and Mac OS, which we also will be covering in future videos. When the installation finishes, you're presented with this welcome screen where you can choose your favorite theme. Personally, I love the new dark theme. It's really easy on the eyes, just beautiful. But I found that for videos, the light theme is easier to see. So I'm going to stick with that from now, but you can choose whichever one you like. Uh, you can also easily change it in the IDE once you get going. From here, you can set up, if you're using Git or Mercurial, instead of Subversion, which we ship pre-installed and pre-configured, you can also use the Migrations Settings tool to import your existing settings if you had a previous version installed, or just customize a couple settings here. Go ahead and get started. So the first thing we have to do is set up the Android tools. And the easiest way to do that is to go in here to the, let's see, it's uh, C program or users, public documents, Embarcadero Studio 19.0, catalog repository. All right, this is where the Android SDK gets installed if you installed it with the installation. If you installed it manually, then go there wherever you installed it to, and you got to find the SDK manager. It always blinks like that for a second because it's a Java application, and it looks terrible, <laughs> but that's okay. It works fine. So let's go make this a little bigger here. So this tells us where the path is that we've installed it to which is useful because sometimes you end up with multiple Android SDKs installed if you installed it yourself and also installed the one um, with the IDE. 
So the first thing we need to do is we need to update the Android tools. It says there's an update available, and we need to install the SDK platform tools and SDK build tools, okay? Then we also need to install a uh, Android platform. I'm not going to install P because it's in beta right now, but I will install 8.1. And you only need the SDK platform. You don't need all the other stuff here. So I'm just installing the SDK platform. And then also you're going to want your USB driver. This is the driver that lets you connect your uh, Android device to your computer. So you, once you've selected those here, you want to set install five packages. Uh, you can come in here later, by the way, and install uh, new versions as well. Uh, for example, when Android P finally releases, you can come in here and install that. So this takes a few minutes to install. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. If you do see this error message here, it's not an error message. It's just saying ADB wasn't running, so it couldn't stop it. This message is letting us know that technically it's updated everything, so we could possibly restart and get a new set of packages. Something I'll frequently do is copy this and this outside of the catalog repository folder so that I don't have to reinstall it every time um, I install a new version of Delphi or C++ Builder. That way they're separate, so you can make a separate folder and put those in there. Uh, that's certainly optional. Just wherever you put it, make sure it's someplace you can keep track of. One thing I want to point out in the SDK platform tools folder is the Android debug bridge or ADB. This is an incredibly useful tool. It's what the IDE uses to install and debug applications on your Android device, but it's also very useful for you as a developer to explore your device and make changes to it. Definitely recommend you add that to your path and get familiar with it. You can also add the SDK manager to your tools menu here. Uh, come in here, configure tools and add it in there, which makes it much easier to go in there and install new versions of the SDK manager. So now let's go ahead in here and SDK manager. We're going to run the IDE SDK manager and import the Android SDK. So it by, because we installed it, it tried to set it up correctly, but because we just updated things, it's not set up right. So I'm going to go ahead and add it again. We're going to say Android add new version and I need to get the path here and select the folder and then the path for the NDK, which in my case is right here, select folder and then it already found the JDK. And so we hit next and it goes through and finds all the files it needs here. Um, some of these files move around, for example, zip align moved from one version of the build tools to another. So if you do end up having problems, you can just delete it, come back in here and add it again. Um, down here at the bottom, it asks you your SDK API version. I've only got 27 installed, but you can install uh, a different version, an earlier version if you want to, for example. Then we hit finish and it's all set up. We can come in here and see what's going on. Like I said, if you do uh, update and something like zip align moves, you'll see a little triangle here with a warning. You can either locate that manually or delete it and add it back in again, and it re-imports it all. I'll walk you through the process of putting your phone into developer mode. Uh, this phone's already in developer mode, but I'll show you the steps anyway. Also, I'm running uh, a beta of Android P, so it'll look different on your phone, but the, the basic steps will be the same. First of all, you go into settings, which is where I'm at now. You scroll down to the bottom and you will have about phone or system or something like that. So I'm going to go into system here. And with this one, I have to go into advanced because I'm looking for about phone. So see down at the bottom is about phone. You'll also notice I have developer options here. That's because it's already in developer mode. Um, you probably won't have that because you're not in developer mode yet. If you do, we, well, you're done. I'll, but let's go ahead and do about phone. And again, here I have to go advanced. And we got to find the build number. So there it is down at the bottom. It says build number. And you just tap on this a few times. And if your phone's not in developer mode yet, after you tap on it a few times, it'll say, keep going, you're almost there. And then eventually it'll say, congratulations, you're in developer mode or something along those lines. And then you go back out and you go into developer options. And the important thing here is you have to turn on USB debugging, which is right there. 
This is what allows you to connect. Um, you know, that's the warning message you'll get. Uh, connect your computer via USB cable over the Android debug bridge so that you can deploy and debug applications from your favorite IDE. So before you can connect your device to the computer, you have to install the USB drivers, which we downloaded with the SDK manager. They get installed in this folder here, extras, Google, USB driver. Now you'll notice here in my device manager, there is no uh, Android or other devices like that, which is sometimes on the older versions of Windows, it used to say other devices, but I don't think in Windows 10 it does that anymore. So all you have to do is come here and right click on here on the Android USB, this is the INF file, which you can't see the extension, and hit install. It says, you want to install? They say yes, and trust it. Yes, we'll trust it. Operation completed successfully, and now you'll notice I have Android device here. So I'm gonna copy this path to my clipboard here because I haven't added it to my uh, system path yet, and Let's go into command, CD, and we'll go to platform tools. Oops, nope. Platform tools, and this is where ADB lives. And ADB devices will tell me, well, first of all, it's gotta start. And it says unauthorized. Now, if I look at my device right now, it has a little screen that says allow USB debugging and gives you a fingerprint. And you're just going to say, okay. And then you run this again and you see it says device there. So this means it's actually authorized. So that's all we need to do to prepare our device for debugging. So now we can bring up the IDE, create new multi-device application. And if we go to Android, we'll see the Pixel XL is an option. If it doesn't show up here, make sure it shows up in Device Manager and run the ADB devices. And if and one of those places you'll see what's going on either. It's unauthorized or you haven't installed the drivers yet. And that's it. Now you're ready to start developing for Android with C++ Builder. Find out more at Embarcadero.com.